Let's hear the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We sincerely apologize for bringing you off the press a little bit behind shadow due to some technical issues. Uh, but we're up and running now. We have Ezekiel Nyaitok who joins us via phone this morning. Ezekiel, it's good to have you join us this beautiful Thursday morning. Thanks for having me. It's a wonderful morning. All right, then let's, let's uh, go through the Daily Independent. ASU Federal Government Committee made perfect fresh agreement soon. ASU Federal Government Committee made perfect fresh agreement soon. Uh, that's what you have boldly written on the Daily Independent. And federal government says ASU strike more complicated than initially anticipated. Sounds like a, a word play right there. Well... Three airlines may collapse as aviation fuel hits 714 naira per liter. I mean, you also have the association saying there's a tendency of having 1,500 naira in the next two weeks if government does not intervene. Fuel marketers handling coys and lament forex, forex scarcity. International Monetary Fund projects Niger's GDP growth at 3.4% inflation to remain elevated and purchasing power for that erodes as inflation hit 17.71%. We're talking about double digit, almost eight years running. A dark horse may emerge. Tunibu's running mate is a figure of speech. I'm sure you want to uh, figure that out. Party settles for Northeast candidates, Muslim Muslim ticket. Tunubu needs Muslim Muslim ticket to win election. This is what uh, Carlos quoted to say. And Electoral Act reps to debate motion to override Buhari's veto on section 84, subsection 8, and 60 days extension of voters' registration. NMMP 45 local firms jostle for 4 million liter supply contract. And NSCDC deploys 9,747 personnel for Ekiti Guba polls. You also have impeachment. 24 lawmakers sign notice to impeach or your deputy governor. We have not announced Atiku's running mate. That's what the PDP is saying. Uh, we move away from uh, the Daily Independent, a quick look at the nation. And on the nation, last-minute intrigues in PDP over Atiku's running mate. Uh, anxiety among party chiefs over choice. Aviation fuel hits 714 naira per liter as petrol queues returns. And Oyo Assembly slams misconduct charges against Deputy Governor. PDP or the Sean Ekiti Peace Pact sign-in. MBS puts inflation rate at 17.71%. And just before we take our attention from uh, the Nation newspaper this morning, issues and varsity union strike complicated, says Minister. Government as to talks ongoing. And our monarch to invoke curses on Catholic Church attackers. OPEC reports Niger's oil outputs decline. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of trouble for uh, a lot of uh, experts would say. But that's it on the nation. And uh, we have the leadership newspaper this morning. I've just been reporting almost differently, but some similarities with the headlines. 24 hours to INEC deadline, Northeast, Northwest, lobby Tunubu for running mate and PDP screens vice president candidate today. Nigeria's inflation soared to new height of 17.71%. Nigeria's inflation soared to new height of 17.71%. Strike, ASU issues more complicated than Nigerians think. The federal government is quoted than that. What could it be? Unveil those behind our killing, Senate tells security agencies. And bandits sack eight Kebi and Niger villages and kill 33 at Dock 30. Yobe senatorial ticket, why I wouldn't step down for Lawan. Uh, you have, uh, you know, 
Beecher quoted on that. And that's the much we can take this morning. But just before then, reps moved to override President Mohamed Buhari on Electoral Act amended. We're looking at Section 84. If I'm not mistaken, subsection 8. Uh, that's the much we can take this morning on the leadership. And we have the punch this morning. Wike Okoa face panel today comes fight over Atiku's vice president slot. Atiku needs vice president that can help secure Nigeria from APC Okoa's aid insists. Wike's structure will give Atiku victory. Ex Rivers commissioner escorted an APC may unveil Tunubu's vice presidential candidate today amid Muslim Muslim ticket controversy. And Buhari orders or okays the TNC's unbundling neck, orders 5,000 megawatts delivery Ju <laughs> July the 1st. I mean, for a population, what are we looking at now? Over 200 million people? 5,000 megawatts? Okay. Uh, a lawmaker's studying judgment on $1.7 billion Malibu scam case. That's the, what the federal government is quoted to say. And varsity lecturers orders spend 719 days on strike under Buhari. Only Lagos, Delta, Kaduna, two others pay pensions, Pencom is quoted to say. It is really saddening. Uh, if this is something to go by, you say Lagos, Delta, Kaduna, and two others pay pension. And 70 airlines failed in Nigeria. Three may collapse soon. The AON is quoted on that. And just then, Ikiti, governorship candidate signed Peace Pact Accord, and NSCDC deploys 9,747 personnel. Inflation surges again and hits 17.71% amid uh, the rising price. Expert call for action as monkeypox spreads to 15 states. Or your lawmakers begin moves to sack deputy governor. A war massacre, you have Senate demands raid on killer's hideout. Rivers woman sells sister baby for 600000 uh, that's what please uh, arrest suspect. Extend voter registration de deadline. Reps urges INEC. Uh, these are the headlines this morning on some of the front pages of National Dailies. Ezekiel Yaitok is, is with us this morning, and it's good to have you join us once again. Thanks for having me. All right, Ezekiel, let's start off with the Daily Independent. The federal government, ASU committee, may perfect their fresh agreement soon. Now, on the other part, you also have uh, the federal government says that the strike is more complicated than initially anticipated. Uh, some of these headlines have reported this, but your thoughts on this ASU and the federal government you know, issues and disagreement? We're looking at 714 days right there. Do you think that this is rocket science? Is it impossible, you know, to get to some form of agreement and settle this issue once and for all? No, it's not rocket science at all. There are two issues involved. One is insincerity. And the second one is lack of commitment to good governance. And those two put together have kept not just ASU, not just the university system, but Nigeria where we are today. You know, a lot of times we forget that the universities are research institutions where they have facts and data because research boils down to facts and data and statistics on a lot of issues, information and things in this country. They know about the monies that come into the country. They know about how these monies are spent they understand the lack of sincerity of purpose on the side of government. And they're like, we are no less important than you are. Every time we have to shift for you. And this time it's, it's, it's come to a point where we can't take it anymore. I happen to be directly involved in it uh, in the sense that my elder sister is a professor and I know what they are going through. And we, we sit down, we talk, and they are willing to be understanding to the extent that government is willing to be sincere. 
But so long as government remains insincere, it's a game of two can play. And unfortunately, the losers on the long run are the young people. So I think that government should stop playing the ostrich. What makes it complicated? It's very simple. Put all the cards on the table. Let this man understand your financial situation and also listen to him when he tells you you are spending money here that is unnecessary. It can be cut and put here. You're not prioritizing us. You can get money for, for defense and all, all sorts of insecurity that is a lot of times considered to be contrived. And money is going there. But where you need to have what will be able to build this country and give us a better nation tomorrow, you don't just care about it. Education is not a priority to you. So these are the things that are not on the table. It's like everybody knows what the other pair, which is typical of what playing the ostrich is all about. It's not rocket science, it's not very difficult. It's just that there is a high level of insincerity on the part of government and lack of commitment to good governance and the fundamentals of um, you know, developing a country. All right, Ezekiel. Um, we also have concerns on the daily independent newspaper. It talks about three airlines uh, facing the possibility of a collapse as aviation fuel hits 714 naira per liter. Uh, you also have an association saying there's a likelihood that, you know, in two weeks' time, uh, you, diesel might just be going for 1,500 naira. Again, this is no rocket science. What is the problem? We have the crude and we send it out. The diesel comes from the crude. The aviation fuel comes from there. For seven years, the same problem has persisted. Are we not thinking about the solution? that is sustainable. Now, is anything coming as a shock or a surprise to us? The answer is no. Secondly, when you talk of a business, that business is either social service or it is a commercial enterprise that you undertake for your profit. The business of government is to set the enabling environment for businessmen to thrive and based on that, inflate the economy. Aside from that, provide employment. Very fine government that don't understand these dynamics and fundamentals in running government and governance. Because of strategic importance, a lot of times government needs to be able to intervene for social services. Now flying should by right be something that is either an emergency or a luxury. I, for one, I live in Ibom State. I do a lot of business in Delta State. I have no business flying to Delta State because within how many hours? Three, I should be in Delta State from Ibom. Three hours. But I can't do that. Every time I have to go to Delta State, I fly from Uyo to Lagos or Abuja, and then I fly to uh, Asaba from either Lagos or Abuja. Can you imagine that because of two reasons? One, the roads are not good. Two, the roads are not safe. In the past seven years, are we not aware of these two problems? The nature of the roads and the safety on the roads. Today, we are sitting and talking about APC, PDP, Ronnie made presidency. Are those the issues? Are we not listening to who will give us a sound bite of what governance is all about? I think we'll get to that point. But the concept of aviation fuel, they should be what you may call cost reflective pricing. Anybody who wants to fly should look at the cost. And we can't, we subsidize uh, fuel for, for diesel. We subsidize uh, petrol. We now uh, subsidize aviation fuel. We subsidize NEPA or power holding. And yet we have no money. We are a fake country and we need to stop. 
do the things we can do. This is a giant of Africa. We are trying to live up to our image when we do not have the resources, the competencies, the capacities. We do not put square pegs in square holes, round pegs in round holes, so that we can have a country that works. We are playing politics. I think the time has come when we should stop and have a total reset and ask ourselves, what do we want? And this is our time. And the media should help us to concentrate on leadership recruitment for the next dispensation. And not talk about party. Look at all the headlines. Who is going to be the running mate? Who is going to be running mate of who? Of the most competent, of the biggest. Can you imagine? We are talking of running a country. Look at our sister Ngozi Okonjo Iweala. When WTO wanted to recruit a CEO, look at the, the processes that went rigorous. Rigorous processes, rigorous processes. And is WTO bigger, more important than the biggest black nation in the world? I think the time has come when we need to really stop and think. So all these problems that are coming up, whether the airlines will collapse or not, you want to do business, you've got to understand that you are going to work on the fundamentals of the business. You do all your pricings and plot but, different but, but Isaac, scenarios. Yeah, I, took, I mean, is it that we're leaving out the part that we probably wouldn't be having this conversation? We understand that right now it probably might just be a global concern in terms of, you know, uh, uh, the, the cost of uh, diesel or petrol, however you want to put it, because even in the United Kingdom, uh, prices have actually gone up. But of course, other people would say the infrastructure, the basic things of life makes it a little bit easy for you know people to go about their businesses without necessarily feeling the impact because they have a good transport system. But are we also leaving out the fact that if we we had we we really should not have any business, you know, exporting our products and importing it back. I think that you are really repeating where I started from. So two of us are effectively on the same page. I started with the fact that we have no business getting the crude, sending it out and importing it, you know, back. Seven years down the line, please tell me one concrete. Um, and you know, this has been a problem over the past 20 years. As we are talking, which of the parties, which of the presidential candidates is giving us a sound bite on how to address this problem? This is where our attention should be. Whether it is Muslim, Muslim ticket, whether the PDP is from the North and APC is from the South, this should not be the conversation today. The conversation should be, Mr. Dumebi Kachiku, yes, you are in ADC. Yes, we've not heard from you, but please tell us what are your programs and what are your projects? All the different presidential candidates, there's so much, you know, um, fanfare about Mr. Peter Obi. Amazing. What are you putting on the table? Let us throw away parties and look at 18 human beings. 18 and start to profile them and zero them down, you know, based on what we are doing, zero them down to the people that are giving us the sound bite on the basic and fundamental problems of this country. Well, so I think that you and I are on the same page. Why are we importing this, which is why we're having the problems? And number two, Yes, go on. You wanted to say something. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, on the leadership newspaper, you have the Yobe senatorial ticket. And, uh, uh, you know, it seemed like uh, there might just be an electoral issue or concern right there. And uh, he says, why I won't step down for Lawan, Ahmed Lawan, Bashir, my China is quoted on that. Uh, in the sense that he's saying you that know, he, it, he contested this election. I mean, unopposed, however. It was and, Lawan. It was Lawan himself, as Senate president, that gave us an electoral act. That electoral act is very clear on processes of becoming candidate. One, you go through the primaries and you are elected. Once you are elected, you cannot be substituted. You cannot, except on two grounds. Ground number one, that the person dies. 
Ground number two, that the person willingly withdraws. Without these two grounds, you cannot, the party cannot unilaterally, like they used to do before, substitute somebody. That was brought about by Mr. Lawan himself. Now he wanted to be president. And he didn't fly. And he now says, you know, there's a story. Let me just quickly tell you the story of a dog that had a bone in his mouth and went to the river and saw a reflection of another bone. The bone was dancing. It looked bigger and all that. So they threw away the small bone and dived into the river to pick the bigger bone. And he spent all his time. And when he was tired, he said, rubbish bone. Go and sit down. Let me go back to my bone. By the time he went back to pick the old bone, one good dog had already come and carried the bone and gone away. So he lost because of the greed of picking a big, bigger bone instead of being contented with the bone he had in his mouth. I think that that tells my position and disposition. That Mr. Lawan should just go and rest. If he cannot be president or vice president, he should know that there are the three C's of life. The chances that come your way, the choices that you make, and the consequences of the choices that you make. The chances, the choices, the consequences. He had a chance. He made a choice. And he must live with the consequence. Hmm. 23 years after, uh, one would be asking, I mean, what exactly, you know, you should probably take the back seat. But of course, uh, electoral act... I think so too. Uh, electoral Act, you have reps debate motion to override Buhari's veto, uh, veto on Section 84, Subsection 8. Uh, that's what you find. That's on the, you, you have that on the Daily Independent and on the Leadership newspaper. It also talks about it as well. It talks about, you know, that part of the Constitution. Reps move to override President Mohammed Buhari on Electoral Act Amendment. Do you think that this, you know, this, the members of the House of Representative have what it takes. So do you see, uh, you know, the will and the strength to push through with this um, motion? Two, uh, uh, the, the, the very first thing is, I don't know why they should waste their energy on that. For the simple reason that the processes have already gone. That's going to be for the next set of elections and all things like that. And actually, that um, uh, the president failing or refusing to sign that, I think, um, I think it, it will eventually come back to be it's eight passed again for two reasons. One is, unless we go back to direct primaries, which is something I'm going to take up with INEC as a life ambition, for them to set templates for direct primaries. That is what is going to stop all this. You know, a lot of times the reps people, what is interesting to them is that they want to be delegates so that they can go and make the money that people are making. They were so upset that they, did, they were not delegates and the money that was being shared, they were not part of it. So I, I don't think that they will actually override Mr. President for two reasons. One is that their self-preservation is always paramount and they are not sure if they will come back. And as a result, you know, those that are coming back may want to fight for it. Those who are not coming back may just look at it and say, let it fly, let it go, rather. So I really don't see anything. Whether they override or they don't override is one issue that really does not catch uh, or sustain my attention. Mm. Now, just quickly, as we begin to, you know, um, uh, coast it down, on the Punch newspaper, I mean, there are several interesting headlines, and we're hoping that we have your perspective and thoughts on this one. It talks about, you know, the pensioners, and uh, you're having PENCOM saying that only Lagos, Delta, and Kaduna, including two other states, pay pension. Is it going to what, what do you make of this? Number one, I think it's um, the, the, maybe I don't know whether it's from the headlines or from PENCOM, they are being mischievous. If you've listed three, you could as well list the five states. That's the way I look at it. Because now, one is there and two other states. It's just like you go for election, pray that you don't have one vote. Have zero. The moment you have one vote, everybody's like, I was the one that voted that one vote for you. So you are better off having zero and nobody talks to you. And because one of my friends was telling me that he had about 39 votes. 
But the text messages he has had is over 300. Honorable, you know I supported you, you know I voted for you. And he had 39 votes. Meanwhile, he has over 300. So when you say Lagos, Delta, and Kaduna, and two others, every governor is going to say, I'm one of the two others. So they should have just listed the but, two but, others. But I, I understand. I understand the argument of two others, but I'm sure that beyond the headlines, if you if you go through it, uh, it probably might just be mentioned yeah, it, it's sad. at, at it's the end sad of the day. But let but let's talk about the fact that we have 36 states, including the FCT, and we're talking yes, about just yes. five states at this yes, point, not five. necessarily being very. I, I, I mean, so what, what happens to the 31? If I'm not mistaken, it's one of the things that I've taken up with these people all all along, and that is that. You work, they don't prioritize the retirement of, uh, of, of, of people who have worked all their lives because the pension scheme is a management scheme for retirees. That's why it's pension, you know? And all your life, you have worked understanding that at exit, this is a strategy for you. But now governments, they constantly deduct all these monies from the workers to the best of my knowledge. So I think that um, NLC should really sit on every state government and be part of the remittances and be part of the management of, of, of PENCOM and, and then, you know, the remittances basically, and then be able to secure because one day they are going to fall into that trap themselves. I think it's you know, unacceptable by any standard or stretch of imagination. If you say that your state is not part of it, make it clear to the people that your state is not part of it and maybe have your local reg. But if it is by law, then we should be a law-abiding country. And I, I so far, I've not, um, apart from the time of minor, I've not had on a general basis of um, general abuse of the pen, PENCOM uh, you know, um, funds and things like that in Nigeria, to the best of my knowledge. So I think that governors should be held and made to account for, for the deductions they've been making by the workers. Okay, interesting. Uh, let's see how all of this unfolds as we proceed. But it, it's just uh, very, very uh, saddening. I mean, it, it is saddening. One would only imagine what um, these, these persons who have actually worked uh, and they deserve this. It's their right. It's, they're entitled to it. And you, you have them being deprived. If this report has anything to go go by, it's 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 quite saddening it's and it's inhuman. It's it's it's, it's almost on. It I mean, one would say it's not very fair, but we're hoping that no, the relevant authorities fair. would uh, you know look into this and come up with a solution. Is it took There are too many issues right here from the issues of you know power <laughs> supply. <laughs> it feels like we we'll just have to grapple with whatever to go through. Now the president okay's the TCN to unbundling of a neck and orders five thousand megawatts delivery in I mean we're talking about July the first right now, five thousand megawatts to be delivered. Uh, we're looking at over 200 million Nigerians. Uh, what, what difference does that really make? And why should we be grappling with, you know, 2,000 megawatts, 3,000, as the giant of Africa? You know, there, 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 are, there are conversations that the media should look into. For instance, uh, I, I'm in ADC. Um, uh, in fact, as we speak, I'm actually at the airport on my way to a kitty to campaign for a candidate, you know, ADC candidate. But... I would say this as an analyst. Some days back, we saw uh, Peter Obi, you know, boarding to go to, I think it's Egypt, to find out how, what they did. Now, that's the sort of thing that we should put pressure on every single person who wants to be president. For instance, the, the, the presidential candidate of the ADC, yesterday, Mr. Kachiku, it was a major team set up because of the large networks he has across the world on power. Now he's going to be able to tell Nigerians what he's going to do. These are the sort of sound bites we want to hear. Don't, I don't want to hear all this, oh, maybe in the next we'll bring another five megawatts and things like that in a country. When you know what is going on in other countries, it's not rocket science. So we need to start to put pressure on everybody that wants to be the president. Everybody. All this issue of big party, small party has to come to an end. But, but is it can yeah, I took, I, I'm sorry because we have to go in no time. The question now would be, is it that we don't understand what the challenge is 
uh, you know, what we're faced with. No, we understand with. what the challenge is. Don't we understand, we understand the troubles the with the power sector in Nigeria? Do we need to go understudy other countries to understand what is going on in our power sector? And no, the you, don't under, are? you don't go to understudy what is going on. I heard that your hairdresser makes your hair really fine. So I come to you and say, please, who is your hairdresser? Because I want my own to be as good. So you are not going to understudy. We are going to see the solution. And these solutions are generic. They are not location specific. Power generation is global. If Israel could solve theirs, if Egypt could solve theirs, if South Africa could solve theirs, how did they do it? Bring the people in, solve ours, and we move on. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. That's what it is. We, we understand exactly what's going on in our past sector. It's just that, uh, like you mentioned in the course of this conversation, you talked about sincerity. It probably feels like Thank it's an you. ingredient that we really lack, and that's also hampering Thank on you. other sectors of our economy. I agree with you. But that's, that's how much you. we can take this morning. Thank you so much for your perspective this morning. On the headlines, we look forward Thanks. to sharing more of your thoughts as we proceed in uh, the course of our shows on The Breakfast. Thank you. Once again, is it going to be? Thank you. God bless you. It's been wonderful. Thank you. All right. And that's the size of our conversation this morning. We always come through with uh, the papers, looking at the front pages and bringing you great insight analysis with a great analyst right here. We will return tomorrow. In the meantime, let's take a break and tell you what happened today in history. Stay with us. <laughs>